to have a physical focus. It doesn't mean you have to be physically focused in limitation and lack. So while simultaneously being naturally, effortlessly physically oriented, like having the ability to respond physically, in the back of your being, not even in the back, but just pervading your being, you start to feel this glow, this, this enlightenment, this empowerment, this connection, this remembrance of your God nature. Your God is nature. It's lovely. And that's an understatement. It's freaking powerful. Don't be afraid of your power. Because you'll only abuse your power when you don't think you have it. When you actually realize you've got all the power you need, you become the most in alignment person you can think of. The most selfless being you can think of. It's only when you don't believe you have all the power you need that you start stealing. That you start stealing other people's desires. Other people's love and affection and joys. You start losing your integrity because you believe you don't have everything that you could ever possibly need, which is powerful. You are amazingly powerful. If you don't feel that, you're a victim. You can assume that. Even if you feel fine and neutral and like, oh, this was a lovely day, the sun was out, I did my groceries, all that stuff. If you don't feel powerful, you've been playing victim. You've been unconscious. You've been below your level. You've been below the belt. So then step it up a notch. Realize you can pick a thought. Realize that you can choose the thought that then anchors you into a new understanding of yourself. I am amazing. I mean, can you see how amazing you are again and again and again? Can you start to feel that? Can you start to generate that power? You can literally feel your quote-unquote spiritual energy built, your connection to your true self built. This is not scary. This is not selfish. This is how we're all supposed to be living. And there's plenty of energy to go around for everyone. It only amplifies each other. It doesn't steal from others. What steals from others is to steal from yourself. Since there is only one reality, if you steal from yourself, you steal from everyone else. If you gift to yourself, you gift to everyone else. You got to feel powerful. And you'll become naturally respectful and wise and clear. And you know, you know this. You can feel this. When you feel powerful, you feel on top of the world and all you want to do is just give everything you have to everyone you know. You just want to give. You just want to provide you just want to be of service you just want to help out not in a needy way like oh can i help you no like you just want to give them the example you just want to have them know they can live their own life generate their own infinity you're generating your own infinite abundance they can generate their own infinity you want them to know that because you can do that and so by being that you become an example of that and they can actually learn from that you can't give anything if you keep yourself small and selfless I'm so humble. I'm such a good spiritual person right now. I don't ask of anything. I'm just being humble. I have no ego. I have no thoughts. In 10 years from now, I'll kill myself. But, but for now, at least, my guru thinks I'm awesome and I'm selfless. I'm not stealing from anyone, not stepping on any toes. I'm such a kind, loving person because I smile at everyone all the time and I don't take anything from them. I don't want anything from them. I just, uh, I'm just humble. Yeah, right. Get real. You got to be powerful if you want to be truly selfless. So drop the facade, the spiritual facade especially. It's terrible. It's horrible. I can't be around you if you're like that. I'm just saying. So, be powerful, okay? Know that you are God, for Christ's sake, right? He died for you so you can know you're God. So for his sake, let his pain, let his suffering on the cross be worth something. At least see it from that angle if you're Christian. Christ suffered for you. Yeah, that's true. He did. I suffer for you. We all suffer for each other. What does that mean? Does that mean you should stay very small? No. Teachers have come throughout all ages, throughout all the centuries, to show us who we are. So embrace that. Don't play dumb and dumb and dumbest. Just be who you really are, which is God. Be as Christ was. Alrighty? Go ahead. Pick a thought right now. Get in the habit of it. Pick a thought. You can. Oh, shit. Yeah, I can. Can you notice that moment where you're like, oh, wait a second. That's actually an option. It's just not in our mindset. We're just like listening. Like, oh, what happened? Oh, oh wait. What time is it? Oh, oh pizza's coming. Oh. oh, that's cool. Thanks for sharing that. Continue. Oh, what, pick a thought? Oh, wait, I can actually be here and choose? 
Whee! Wonderful. I remembered. I remembered who I am. I'm a creator. I'm consciousness. I'm God. So pick a thought right now. Pick a thought that feels the best you can imagine. Don't judge yourself if it's not amazing. Again, that can be those step up thoughts. Just take it one step at a time. Whatever thought you can actually feel into that feels slightly or significantly better than your previously unconsciously assumed thought or vibration. Because again, thought is vibration. Choose the vibration that resonates for you, that excites you, that lifts you up. And take it from there and pick your thought again. And realize that you can pick your thought again. And you can pick an even more exciting thought. And not this shouldn't become a needy game. Like, oh, what's even better? But you can just always remember or frequently remember throughout the day that you can choose your reality and then be really happy with that choice. If you're really content with that choice for a minute or for an hour, whatever resonates. And then you pick another thought. You anchor yourself in a new vibrational reality. The pattern of presence energy that is at your disposal starts shaping its time, space, form, reality. Because you chose a different thought. And now you're experiencing and enjoying that. Not necessarily immediately thinking, oh, there's something better, oh, there's something better. No, you pick a thought that feels really good, and then you enjoy the way it takes shape, the way it feels, the way it starts to color your experience of life. And then you choose another thought that is perhaps even more joyful, but perhaps just equally as joyful in another way. Or perhaps even slightly less joyful for whatever reason, but still joyful, still enjoyable. And then you enjoy that pattern for a moment. But at least you know you're consciously choosing and then experiencing your choice. And then choosing and then experiencing your choice. And then choosing and then experiencing your choice. You don't become a... Thank you, sheep. <laughs> Victim, same thing. You don't become that. No sheep behavior. It's too late for that. We've tried it. It's time for something else. It's time to know how powerful you are.